They say a picture's worth a thousand words. What do you see in this one? When I look at it, I see you. I see the whole world. I see everybody. And the ways we're connected and the different relationships. We're here in the United States. You can see Western Europe. The up and coming economies, Brazil, India, Russia, China. And here you are right here. This is Atlanta Metro, and that's the Kennesaw area. <laughs> By the way, this is what happens when NASA takes a selfie. <laughs> what do you see? I see beauty. You see the oceans. You see the dark spots on the continents, which actually is vegetation. The light spots. Not as much vegetation. So I want you to think about something. How do you and how has the world used data in the past? I'm going to give you a quick uh, lesson on relational databases. But I want to show you a few more slides. The Nile River. Isn't it interesting how everything's concentrated right along the Nile? Are there people outside? Not right there where all that electricity is showing up? Absolutely. So this is not only about where people are, but it's where economic development has happened, where electricity is. This one's really striking. North Korea and South Korea. You can see the 38th parallel. 49 million people are estimated to live below that line. And above it, there's 24 million people. You can actually see the ships in the ocean and boats and everything else. And this may be phosphorescence in the ocean, but there's also ships over there. But look at the lines and how the people have built stuff up and follow along those patterns. What do you see now? What do you see? So my relational database lesson. Relational databases are essentially two different tables. You have a sales rep table, which rep IDs, that's a primary key. And you have the customers in another table that have a sales rep ID in it. That's a foreign key. And those two tables, the only way that you can really get information out of both of them to find out which sales rep goes with which, with which customer, you have to basically query it. And so everything that you want to know about any of that data has to be embedded in those tables. If you want to know how far slick sales rep is from Tim. You can't tell from that. There's no way to do it, unless you actually do a measurement and measure slick to Tim. So what if that key column, those key columns, were place? What if slick represented his sales area in that column? And Tim and all the customers were points that you could ask what I call little kid questions above, below, inside, outside, how much further, how far away. Those are all spatial analysis questions. And in here, if you want to look at the Nile, how far is it from Washington, DC? You can do it with this. See, I not only see just a cool picture, I see data. I see the intensity of the light, which represents how much light is there, which represents economic development. What do you see now? GIS stands for Geographic Information Systems. And it's all about taking this data and displaying it spatially. And making, making queries and things that are automated that can ask those little kid questions. And it's relatively a new innovation. A lot of people are still still in the path of tabular queries and tabular data and joining them tabularly and have to do all this extra work that if you just say this is here and that's there, then you were able to extrapolate all those spatial relationships. So I'll tell you an example here of how this works. And the beauty of this is you're not stuck with just one layer. You can bring in everybody else's data if they'll let you use it and get some really powerful analysis. The fictional Poe Industries. We've just developed an amazing toilet paper. It makes you feel so good the FDA and the DEA want to regulate it as a controlled substance. 
<laughs> and fundamentalists think it's an abomination. That's how good it is. And we're going to sell it in Georgia. So I could use this, and I actually, there's a lot of dark areas in the state, right? So I can narrow down where I want to target my sales force. So what if I add population on census tracts over 500? See what that does now? <laughs> I live with my wife, my daughter, and my mother-in-law, four people in our house. We use a crazy amount of toilet paper. So what if I add census tracts and have an average household of more than four per household? See how those layers are coming together now? What about interstates? Because I'm going to sell this stuff by the truckload. And I want my sales force to go really quickly. I'm going to sell it by the train load, the box car. There's no labels on this map intentionally because I want you to think about your data. How would this be if it was whatever you dig, whatever you're passionate about? What would you get out of your data that you, you can't see now? Because you only have those tabular tables to look at. That's the power of where. That's the power of GIS. One of my favorite stories, I've had a lot of interns over the years, and I've really been passionate about not holding on to the GIS baton and waiting for, to find just the right person to hand it off to so that they could take it from me and then they could be the GIS person. I want to give one to everybody in this room. I want to give one to everybody in this world and then have y'all turn around and pass it off to people. The next person. You know what? I mean, I, there's this thing called GIS and you wouldn't believe what it'll let you see in your data. One of my interns, a master, Amanda, I did exit interviews with this particular group of interview, uh, interns. And Amanda said, she worked in a geography internship in a room with eight GIS interns. And she said, I don't, I know, I know what GIS will do and I see how powerful it is. I know I don't want to do it for a living. <laughs> and I was like, yes, it was a great yes moment because she had the power of where, but she also knew it wasn't her passion, but she knew where to go get it if she ever needed it. And then I had another one, an intern, Jacqueline. And when I interviewed Jacqueline, it was, it was kind of funny. All I had was a fire department internship for her. And she had said during the interview, I really only want to do environmental, I don't want to do fire. And I was like, look, this is all I got. So you really need to do the fire. And at the exit interview, we were talking about it. And I said, one of the questions was, how has your perspective about GIS changed? And she said, you know, I used to only want to do environmental. But then I saw how important it was and how it made a difference and how it saved lives, having good locations, good routes for these emergency services. And she said, it's changed me now. I want to be in public service. And she is. She works for the state of Georgia. And what she does all day long for this particular agency of the state of Georgia is walk around as a GIS expert, handing out the power of where to different departments. Things that would take them a week, she can show them how to do it in three minutes now, engaging the power of where. What do you see now? What does your data look like? What, is your, what are you passionate about? Environmental issues, endangered species habitats, site locations, finding out where you could put the next big heavy industry the next big fast food restaurant, the next church. What are you passionate about? There's a lot to see here in this map. And again, I, I don't see data anymore. I don't see just mere colors. I see the data. And I see people connected and I see people sharing and I see everybody mashing up their data to do something completely new and actually completely revolutionary changing the world. I want to change the world by basically telling y'all about it so that y'all can go out and do amazing things. And you can change your world and your field, whatever that is, by using the power of where. Welcome to where <laughs> and welcome to GIS. <laughs>